So the Foreign Secretary there. Uh, Nabila Ramdani, meanwhile, is a French Algerian journalist in central London for us now. We heard the Foreign Secretary talking about full and accurate information. That is what is scarce at present. Uh, can you bring us anything from your Algerian sources, Nabila? Well, uh, I have been uh, speaking to uh, government uh, officials in Algeria under the condition of anonymity since they are not really allowed to speak to the press, but uh, uh, it has to be said that the Algerian uh, authorities have been quite uh, busy dealing with a uh, very serious crisis, but they have uh, also been uh, aware of uh, the criticism that has been leveled at them about the way uh, they handle this uh, military uh, operation on the, the BP plant and, and the robust manner uh, in which it was uh, uh, carried out and what they had to say is that effectively uh, we are dealing with the largest uh, gas installation uh, in Algeria it represents a, a you know a huge proportion of the national uh, GDP and it's a vital uh, facility for to the Algerian uh, economy and there was no possibility whatsoever that the Algerian uh, government uh, was going to let uh, al-Qaeda uh, overrun uh, this facility effectively and they wanted to send a strong a message about uh, terrorism. There were fears that this installation was going to be destroyed as well. But they also add that um, had the attack taken place uh, somewhere else on an isolated compound, then there would have been room for negotiations, as was the case, if you recall, in 2003, uh, when uh, 30 European nationals had been taken uh, hostage uh, in uh, the Sahara uh, region of Algeria, negotiations uh, took place and it took six months for uh, all uh, of the uh, foreign nationals to be released, but all were freed uh, in the end. Uh, I think the Algerian authorities are also prompt to point out to the uh, history, the very violent history of the country, uh, dating back to the 1950s, effectively uh, fighting uh, the French in a very savage war, and then the country sunk into uh, chaos over a solid decade uh, when it was uh, involved in a civil war which ended up with at least 250,000 Algerians uh, being killed. So this very violent history has produced one of the most ruthless uh, security forces uh, in Algeria which uh, is ready to deal um, in a ruthless manner and reply in kind uh, to the kind of uh, uh, ruthless gangs uh, that has been involved in the hostage taking. And so, Nabila, uh, given that and given how vital the installation was to them and now an international hostage crisis, the biggest for 30 years most people are uh, assessing it as, uh, they've, got, uh, they've got a huge problem on their hands this morning. What are they saying? Because they said last night that the drama was over. Meanwhile, the British Foreign Office is saying this morning that it isn't. It's an ongoing situation. So what information can you gather about what the Algerians are actually doing there on the ground? Well, uh, I think they're effectively saying that uh, as far as the, uh, um, you know, the overall military uh, aspect of their, of their uh, operation, uh, that, uh, as far as they're concerned, is over. But we are talking about uh, a huge uh, facility and there are still uh, searches going on on the, uh, on the premises, effectively, uh, looking if for terrorists effectively are hiding on, on the facility and they want to make absolutely sure uh, that uh, there is uh, no threat whatsoever left on, uh, you know, as far as uh, the, this installation is concerned and they are uh, of course looking for hostages and indeed captors. And can you give us any sense of Algeria's relations with some of the countries involved? Because obviously in the early hours of this morning the Japanese called in the Algerian ambassador uh, to express concern about what, the way the operation had been conducted. Meanwhile Reuters is now reporting uh, that the Americans have landed a plane in, in the Amenas to pick up their nationals. Uh, what is the Algerian relationship with the British, the French also involved, the other nationalities, the Japanese, the Americans? Well, we, we've seen from the very beginning a, a divergence in, in the approach on, on how to deal with this uh, crisis when Western leaders were uh, prompt to encourage uh, negotiations uh, to try to preserve Western lives. The uh, approach uh, taken or, uh, by the uh, Algerian authorities was much more uncompromising uh, precisely because of the uh, history of Algeria uh, dealing with uh, 
terrorist activities uh, for decades. And as far as the Algerian population is concerned, uh, they are very uh, angry because they, they see themselves as the victim, effectively, of the uh, spillover of the military intervention in Mali. And uh, they fear very much that this is going to bring back, you know, the dark uh, uh, chapter of uh, Algerian history, especially the 90s, which was marked and indeed marred by uh, violent uh, terrorism. Uh, and, and in that respect, they feel that they are being caught in that situation. And although the relationship between Algeria and uh, Western countries hasn't been um, uh, perhaps one of the strongest over the past few years, we've seen how recently, uh, especially uh, how the uh, French president uh, managed to get the support of the Algerian government in uh, the uh, military uh, intervention in Mali, Algeria opening its airspace to uh, French planes and indeed sharing intelligence with the uh, uh, French government. So that was quite a, an astonishing move by the Algerian authorities who saw there an opportunity to reach out to uh, Western uh, leaders uh, to try and tackle this very serious issue of Islamic militancy that is affecting not only North Africa but very much the whole of the continent, West Africa uh, in particular. Nabila Ramdani, thanks so much for joining us. And just a reminder, we'll have full coverage.